All right, so for the first time ever, I'm actually going north to go on an excursion. We're on I-5 and we're heading north towards the Salem area. We're gonna meet up with Edward Shin and Katie and Rare Tree today. Colin is along. We're going to uh, do some exploring in the sort of Western Oregon wilderness and hopefully find some place to camp along uh, a river or a creek. See what happens. It's already here. I'm gonna go ahead and air down because I hate driving on gravel with full pressure. Yeah, Roger that. I'll do the same. I just gotta air down a little, go for a little smoother ride up the gravel road here. It's Memorial Day weekend, and although we're in the initial stages of the state reopening from our coronavirus lockdown, many campgrounds are still closed. But there are a ton of people out, and we're seeing dispersed campsites occupied left and right, like nothing I've ever seen before. While we want to spend some time exploring today, we also don't want to have evening roll around and not find some place to camp. So we've decided to try and secure a campsite right away. We're all in ground tents, so we can establish camp, then roll out in the afternoon to further explore the area. Even though we're seeing campers all along the main road here, I did some pre-scouting on maps before the trip, and identified a little trail off the beaten path that I think may yield us a creekside campsite. This thing is huge. Yeah. It's a palace. It's very nice. Hello, Bernie. Can you, stand? you can pretty much stand up in here, can't you? Yeah. It looks taller inside than mine, actually. Yeah, nice. Ground tent versus rooftop tent. Well, I like this one because you can stand in it, and it's bigger. Oh, yeah, and you can't stand in the rooftop no. tent. Um, so, I mean, it just kind of depends on the, you know, the situation, but I like this one still. As far as setup, setting up this versus setting up the rooftop oh, tent? This faster, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. And breakdown also? Yep. Easier, yeah. yeah. This is kind of annoying to have to put together. You need two people for sure, but. Yeah. You also need a big Space. patch of flat ground for this thing. Yeah. Whereas the rooftop tent, you just have to get the truck someplace. Yeah. 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 established, we can now take our time and check out the area. 
We're in some deep, lush, temperate rainforest here, and there is water flowing everywhere you look, even right down the road. Central Oregon a couple of weeks ago, a pretty high elevation, there was no snow left. So I am stunned to discover we've hit some snow up here. And it seems to be blocking the road. It's gonna try and get through. Well, I think we did get Ed stuck. I thought you didn't want to get stuck, Ed. He dug and dug and dug, trying to get snow out from under Ed's truck so he could back up onto his traction boards. But he had got himself very high centered up on a mound of snow down the middle that he just couldn't clear with shovels. His tires were basically suspended and couldn't get any pressure down onto the traction boards. I've also got a snatch strap. I might be able to give you a tug. All else having failed, that is ultimately what we resorted to. Ed's full-size truck is obviously a big lump of weight for my little Forester, but it's not like I needed to pull him out of deep, sticky mud. He just needed a little nudge to get up onto the traction boards and get a little momentum moving backwards. I figured that with just a bit of momentum myself, the springy recoil effect of the snatch straps would get him moving just enough. I jammed my head into the windshield and broke my windshield. Amazing. Once I hit the, once I tugged. Are you okay? Yeah. I, the thing is, it didn't even hurt. It was because just a little. Adrenaline, maybe. It was just a little bump. Windshields are uh, and coated for exterior, not interior. Oh. They're soft on the inside. <laughs> oh my god. That's crazy.
I suffered no ill effects from my intimate encounter with the windshield. No bruise, no lump, no pain, no nausea or other symptoms. Still, everyone was definitely ready to just chill in camp for the rest of the evening. Tonight we're going to make a soy ginger uh, stir fry with uh, lots of vegetables and some quinoa. So I cut up some boneless, skinless chicken thighs uh, back at home so I wouldn't have to do it out here at camp. And I've been marinating it in some soy sauce, balsamic vinegar, some chopped up ginger, some red pepper flakes, and just a little splash of Rose's lime juice for a little bit of sweet, tart flair. All right, I've got the mushrooms in there now with the chicken. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, bell pepper as well. Then I'm gonna start the quinoa cooking. Okay, to make quinoa, you put two times as much water as how much quinoa you have. So there's how much quinoa I've got. Basically just bring the quinoa to a boil and then turn it down and let it simmer until all the, wa until all the water is absorbed. Mm. Oh, smelling good. I usually like to put some leafy greens in my stir fry. It makes it extra healthy and it's a nice extra flavor element. I often opt for like kale because it's extra tough and it holds up to the cooking without just turning into a wilty mess like spinach or bok choy might do. So once everything is mostly cooked, I'll put in the kale and it just takes another minute or two of the kale cooking to sort of finish that off.
As usual, I've started my morning with a hike to explore the area on foot. I enjoy this ritual no matter where I am, but there's something extra special about being in the lush Pacific Northwest rainforest. The sound of water trickling down hillsides, the faintly mildewy yet somehow refreshing scent of the never-ending decomposition on the forest floor, fallen trees rotting away as moss and ferns take hold, the springy cushion of fir needles and cedar boughs underfoot, a thousand shades of green in every direction, punctuated occasionally by subtle touches of wildflower color. The western white trillium is in bloom at the moment, with blossoms turning to a purple hue as they age, while wild rose presents a delicate pink flower that bears little resemblance to the garden varieties of the same name. The birds provide a surround sound serenade echoing off the tree trunks against the ever-present white noise of nearby streams rushing over rocky creek beds. Back at camp, Ed and Katie have already packed up even as Colin continues to slumber. They have to get back to town this morning, and we as well will be heading back towards civilization soon. Okay, we'll do. Have a good trip. Alright, so Ed and Katie left a little while ago. We've got our camp broken down and packed up, and so uh, we're gonna head back to Eugene. Now you know if you headbutt someone, you're going to be all right. <laughs>